Hello there. In today's video, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna talk about my two years as a nurse practitioner, kind of like what this last year has looked like, some things I've learned, but mostly we're gonna talk about imposter syndrome. And it's gonna be a little bit different from other videos I've made because I don't have a solution because I am going through it right now and it's kind of brutal. My hope is it leaves you feeling a little bit more like maybe you're not the only one going through this if you are and hopefully provide you a few insights, I hope, um, so that you can learn these things sooner rather than later and not wait until you're two years into it to know these things. But it's gonna be more of a chill laid back vlog, not super edited like my normal ones. Normally I try to like educate you and leave you with things and I don't, guys, I'm in the middle of it right now and I don't have anything for you. So let's hang out, sympathize with each other and hopefully learn a little bit of something. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I have now been working as a family nurse practitioner for two years. So last year I did an update video that kind of said like about the first year. So I will leave that one linked down below. And here we are, it's year two, which is just crazy. Um, so let's start with things that have kind of changed over the last year and some tips or should we do tips last? Let's do tips last. Cause we'll kind of, we'll learn, do things I learned and then we'll do the main like, imposter syndrome, which is how I'm, what I'm really struggling with right now. And then we'll end on a better note of tips. Yeah, let's do that. It's good to end on a positive note. I think things that have kind of changed over the last year, I have definitely gotten more confident and comfortable. I remember if you guys have watched the vlogs from the beginning of when I was an FNP, I was just, I would say all the time, like, oh, I'm nervous to go in and I no longer feel scared to go into work. I don't remember if that's how I felt at the end of year one, but I feel like around then I was probably getting a little bit more confident. So with all of these things, I hope the whole point of this isn't to scare you. I hope you know <laughs> if you're sitting there and you're, you're new or you're in school to be an NP, uh, it's not, this is not to scare you. It's to hopefully offer you light at the end of the tunnel that like most of these things you're going to get there and then we can commiserate about imposter syndrome because you might feel that and maybe you don't and then just go you you're a rock, a rock star so not to scare you just to kind of let you know you're not alone i feel like that's my overarching channel goal is i want you to feel like you're not alone so like i was saying i'm definitely not really nervous to go into into work anymore i'm more confident Actually, weirdly, I'm more confident telling people I'm not sure. In the beginning, I feel like I was so nervous about coming out and saying like, oh, I don't really know, I'm gonna have to go look it up. And now I feel like I'm in a much better spot to just say like, hey, I'm not sure, I'm gonna go look. I'd recently did a Q and A that in the beginning, we talked about how I say that and how I leave a room if I need to, to go look something up. So I'll leave that link down below too. Also, if you ever wanna do, um, have a random question for me or anything, I do Q and A's every other week on this channel. So make sure to subscribe if you like what you see or have any questions or just wanna know more. Sorry, I keep getting on side tangents, but confidence I think would be the big thing, which is really ironic dealing with the imposter syndrome that has come in with year two. I feel much better about patient education actually, because do I have something in my teeth? I just realized, okay, no, good. <laughs> I put on lipstick and then I was like, wait, I always get lipstick on my teeth because I don't know how to be, and I don't know how to put on makeup. I am much, a much better, much, I guess, better educator to my patients because I have, more of a flow with most things. So I'm not quite as paranoid. In the beginning, it was so hard to be like, oh my gosh, like, am I keeping track of this? Have I cast them this, this, X, Y, and Z? Like, do they need labs? Do they need, when was the less physical? What, like, are they dying in front of me? Now, like a lot more of that's on autopilot. So I have time my brain's not like cluttered with tiny tasks. So I'm able to be a much better educator because my brain is calmer and I feel more in control of the situation and I have more time. So if you're in the beginning and you just are like, I went into this to educate patients and you just don't have time yet, that was me. It took me like at least a year, like I'm not kidding, to hit that stride and be like, okay, I, you know, things are calmer, I can do this now. I can work more on my own. I remember I, in the beginning, every now and then, I always have access to the provider I work with, but she is not necessarily always in the building. That was the goal of bringing me on was so that she could have a little bit more freedom in a life. And in the beginning that I was just petrified. I, when she would be, when I would have like either a clinic day almost by myself or like if she left in the afternoon at one point, um, she's always there by phone. And I'm really lucky I have a great collaborating physician I work with. And she's always had like been very available to me but it's just terrifying me to be on my own. And I haven't been scared like that in a really long time. Somewhere in year two, that stopped. So I hope that's a huge encouragement to you because it was really hard to be scared all the time going in and just feeling like that nervousness of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be alone. 
and that's gone away, which is really, really, really nice. I've definitely gotten a lot more comfortable managing, you know, difficult conversations with patients. I have, I feel like almost like gone, I've handed the reins over to my patients a lot more in this second year where now it's much more, I've always tried to be very patient centered, but now I'm much more like I lay all the options on the table, kind of explain my rationale behind all of them and say like, you know, I'm much more like, here you go, you pick. Whereas in the beginning I was so focused on like, got evidence-based guidelines and we have to follow them. And now I realize it's more of like patients are going to be much more receptive and actually follow through with a plan of care. I mean, like, just like they kind of teach you if they're really involved with it and help come up with it, because just cause it's the best thing per the guidelines and the research doesn't mean that if that person's not going to do it, then it doesn't matter at all. You know what I mean? So I've been much more comfortable this year, marrying the two and saying like, here's what you're willing to do. And here's perfect. I guess I should switch those. Let's see what we're actually gonna do. And just becoming more comfortable, um, realizing that everything is not textbook. That's been a huge thing in the second year. And that just comes with being comfortable. And over time, you'll kind of get a feel for that and what you wanna do in your own practice. Okay, I think that wraps up the big things I've learned because really, honestly, um, I was trying to think of like positives for this. And those are definitely positives, but it's been really hard. And I was kind of with imposter syndrome. So if you're not familiar with imposter syndrome, it's kind of that feeling of like, I, what am I, someone's gonna come in the room almost and be like, you aren't qualified to do this. Like, what are you doing? What, what makes you think you can do this and that you're being a value, um, you feel like an imposter, even though you're obviously qualified to do the job. You've gone to school, you've done all the things. And it's, it really, like the first year I felt it a little bit, but I was mostly just so terrified and so scared. And I was like, oh, I kind of feel it, but not really, maybe I missed it. And year two, a couple months, really has been like the last six months, I, this hit me like a truck. And I've really been having, oh, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna, it's really been hard because it's kind of hit me in every aspect of this. So obviously like I do YouTube stuff. Um, and Instagram stuff. And it's me. I just feel like, who am I to be doing this? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like there's so many other better people out there who are doing this. They know so much more. Um, what am I even offering? Like with my patients, I feel like, you know, I could be so much better. I could, someone's going to come in and find out that I'm not like really doing a good job. I'm constantly scared of, you know, people finding out and being like, who would you, who do you even think you are? And that honestly like blindsided me because I was feeling a little bit like pretty good there for a little, a minute. And then this happened and it has been really hard. It's just totally, I'm usually a fairly confident person and this has rocked me. Um, it makes me on it, it. Like I went through a whole thing where I was like, maybe I shouldn't post on YouTube. My videos for a while got very, even now, like if we're being really honest, like I'm, I don't, want to show up and ever lead anyone astray. That's something else I'm like really afraid of that's kind of come in with this, like at work and with this. And so I'll find like, I'm putting less out there because I wouldn't want to educate anyone in a, in a way that wasn't like the right path at work. I've noticed that I will be much more hesitant to want to rock the boat and totally change a treatment plan. Cause I'm like, what if this is the wrong thing? And it's been really, really hard. I, and I don't know how to navigate it. I've tried different things. Like I said, this video is probably, I feel like it's not gonna be helpful, except if you're feeling like this too, maybe you're not alone. Um, in terms of work, I've tried to really like, I was, my first thing was like, I just need to learn more. And I was doing, I, you know, I listened to podcasts. I will link a video of like all the edu health education videos I, videos, podcasts I listen to. I listen to those in the car all the time when I'm at home, when I'm cooking and cleaning. And some of them are a good chunk of them are healthcare related, like, uh, primary care updates and things geared towards my job. So it's like content constantly like teaching me little things of how to be a better provider. And so I was doing that. And then I was trying to like every night do some homework and like look up things I saw that day that I wasn't sure on. And I got really burnt out. Like, to be honest, I still like my podcast. That's a really easy thing for me to digest but coming home and then looking everything up, I was, it was making me so burnt out and tired that then I like didn't want anything to do it. And I was just like, I was really burnt out with all of it. I was just like, I, you know, I don't feel like this is giving me more confidence. It's not solving the problem for me. And I know for some people like that's gonna help feeling like you are tackling the problem by, you know, just like continually building your knowledge base. Um, I tried kind of going the opposite way and just being like, I'm gonna look things up as I go. And that didn't really like help. I mean, it helped my practice in that 
as I was like encountering things, I was learning a lot about them. So that was really good, but it didn't help that feeling of what am I even doing here? And that's when I kind of realized like, oh, like this is, I don't like, this is gonna be something I really have to work on tackling that I'm obviously still working on tackling because you would think the solution to, I feel inadequate would be education um, and teaching myself to be more adequate. And not that I'm not, but you know what I mean? But that's not working. And so then I've tried, um, brushing it under the rug. And that's been honestly what I've done mostly is like hoping that, you know, those feelings are going to be there every now and then, and we'll sh ignore them and come back a different day and hope that it's better. And that's what I've been doing. I have good weeks. I have bad weeks. I have good days and bad days where some days I feel like totally fine. I'm like, Oh yeah, I can do this. I got this. And half the days, honestly, I would say I'm like, I don't even know if I should like post on YouTube. I don't know if I should post on Instagram. I don't know at work. I'm like, I feel good or I feel bad. Like going in, I just, I feel so impostery. And that's really the only way to say it. So that's been really hard. Um, I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> I don't have a solution. I, if you guys have one that has worked for you, I would love to know. Or if you've just, I guess, felt like this, that would be good to know too. Because obviously not a lot of people go around feeling like, I feel like I don't really offer a lot and don't know much what I'm doing. And you know, like that's not a, a thing that most people love admitting. Um, so if you've ever felt like that and you want to share that, feel free to down below so that other people can too, because I get so many messages of people saying I have such bad imposter syndrome. That's why I'm making this video. Cause I get so many people coming cause it's something I haven't wanted to talk about cause it's uncomfortable. And especially when you've kind of made a platform on like on YouTube where you're like trying to, you know, help people. I made this channel because I got a lot of questions from like my peers and everything about like things I was doing in NP school or nursing. And I was like, Oh, like uh, I can answer those questions. And then to now feel like, I don't even feel like adequate to answer those questions. It's like a kind of a, you're always like, Hey, subscribe to my channel. I don't know what I'm doing. That's if I could describe my life in a nutshell, it's that how I'm feeling right now. And so obviously I haven't wanted to say anything. I also don't want a bajillion people being like, Oh my gosh, like everything's fine. Like I don't need sympathy, anything. I, I really, really don't. This is more of just, if you're feeling it, like I'm feeling it too, let's sympathize together in the comments so we all know that we are not alone. Um, I think I have beaten this over the head and we can stop talking about it. But if you're feeling like that, whether it's at work, in life, as a parent, as a friend, as a partner, like in anything, if that's you, you, my friend, are not alone. I do not have a solution for you. And I, again, struggled to make this video because I like to have things all wrapped up in a nice tidy bow. Like I went through this, it was hard. Here's how, here's some tips to get through it. And here you go. Um, and that's not where we are yet. Maybe one day we can make a, how I got over imposter syndrome, but right now that's where we are. Also, if you have anything of what you would like to see on my channel in general, like I said, I'm feeling very just unsure. I am unsure <laughs> what, I feel like people, there are other people out there who are just doing such a better job and know so much more. And I'm like, I just like, should let them do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just feel like my content's not that helpful. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm just, I'm in a really weird spot with all of this. And that's my rant on that. So <laughs> yay, let's talk about tips. I told you we would need something happy at the end of the video. <laughs> and now you understand why. I know it will get better. Like in my soul, I know if I just keep going, um, I think it'll feel better eventually. I guess we're not done. I will say family medicine is hard because it's so vast. And that is something that I think tipped it off was I was starting to do all my CEUs and I was like dabbling in a bunch of stuff and realizing when I was doing my CEUs, how much I really could brush up on and learn a lot in. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like, do I even know anything? And like, I know I know things. Like, I know I know things. I know I, I know when I know, I know what I know and I know what I don't know, which I feel like is a huge skill that I've really refined over the last year and gotten better at. Um, that's huge, I think, for anyone, whether you're a nurse or a nurse practitioner, any job really, to know what you don't know is far more important than knowing actually what you know, because then you can get help. But knowing, really, really realizing, knowing what I don't know, and I've talked to the woman has been leading into this of just like, wow, like, how am I even going to over, like, how, how are you ever going to know all of that? Um, but I think one day we'll get there slowly. I mean, all you can do is take one bite at a time and we're all, we're going to get there. All of us, we're all going to be fine. We're all going to get there. We're all going to learn the things. It's just going to take time. And apparently two years, that's not the mark yet. You're not at it at two years. So if you're two years in, just like me, and you're not there, me either friend. <laughs>
it's literally two, so year two with all this might have honestly even been harder than year one. And I know that's not the case with most people. The first year is usually the most brutal, unless you're me, my brain, <laughs> your brain is torturing itself. Anyway, now we're really going to be done, be done talking about that. Let's talk about some tips. So I don't have a ton. <laughs> I'll be honest, but I will, I thought of a few. Tips are one, um, I mean, this is just like a, a different life lesson. Don't wait until the end of the year to get all your CEUs. If you are in a state that does not require CEUs, but you just have to certify every three or five or six or whatever your ANP or ANCC wants, schedule it out. Don't wait till the end. This year I waited until I was six months in to do my 50 CEUs that I have to do. And that's a lot. That's like, like two a week, which is a lot, um, especially if you don't get CE time. So just think about that. The second thing that I wish I had adopted a lot earlier is templates. Take the time in your charting system to write out templates. And I can do a whole video about templates if anybody has any questions, but you can usually YouTube your charting system and then how to make templates. And that's how I learned on mine. I was like, eClinical Works, how to make a template. And I watched that. Take some time in the beginning to set your templates up. But in terms of charting, it makes it so much easier to just kind of go in, tweak it where it needs to be tweaked, make it more personal for the person. But it cuts down charting time by so much. Another thing I've started doing is incorporating at the beginning of the visit saying like, hey, we have 20 minutes or we have 30 minutes. Here's what I want to get done. Um, what are some of your, like, what is one of your objectives? That way you are going into the room, setting a time limit, um, letting them know that this limit exists, what your agenda is. So if it's a physical, like I, well, I'm going to ask you about some of your maintenance, like preventative healthcare stuff. I'm going to do a physical exam. Um, we're going to go over your lab work. And then what would you like to cover? And then at the, do that at the very beginning. And then you can kind of figure out a game plan that can be applied to anything in your nursing world as well, or whatever job, you know, you have going into the patient's room and saying, Hey, in the next 12 hours, here's what we need to get done. Um, what do you want to get done? You know what I mean? So like just starting the encounter off with an understanding of kind of a time frame, which is going to hopefully curb some, like the 8 million complaints that they have or the super duper chattiness. Um, unless you have time to chat, a little chatting is good. A lot of chatting, <laughs> it can eat up a lot of your visit. I've gotten a lot better implementing that. Um, and it just gives the appointment some direction, which is really helpful. I have really gotten much better at saying, I'm not sure I'm going to leave. So again, I'll leave that video down below of kind of how I phrase that. Um, which has been really helpful because I'm not frantically Googling in the room anymore. It just feels much more like I'm in control of the situation when I, even when I'm not quite sure of what to do, I have definitely gotten better at randomly kind of calling specialists if I need to. So if I really have a question about hematology, like, do I need to send this person? I'll just call the hematologist before I was like, they're going to think I'm dumb. Now I'm like, no friend. That's a tip I got from Liz at real world NP. She's phenomenal. Um, she's one of the people that I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, everything go follow her. She's on YouTube and Instagram. Seriously. Like, a gem. That's something I picked up from her was just like, call them up and be like, Hey, help. They're either going to help you or they're not. But most of the time they will, because then you're giving them business or they're like, no, don't waste my time. And the last thing in terms of just charting. So I don't get quite as behind is making sure after every encounter I have written by the time before I go into the next patient's room, I have written the entire treatment plan. I've sent the labs. I've sent the medications. I have documented at least like some kind of chicken scratch in the HPI. And I've done the physical assessment, any pertinent physical assessment and any pertinent or standout review of systems. That takes, yes, it takes a couple of minutes, but hopefully not too many. And it at least gives you enough to go back when you're going through, you won't forget any of it, one. And two, like, it doesn't take too much longer to fill in the rest of a normal review of systems um, and to make your HPI into words. My goal, over this last year has really been like that HPI should be done before I leave the room. Like I am typing that as I write. Oh, I've also gotten a lot better as I'm um, listening. I can listen and type. And then if I need to pause for a second and just update the, I say pause right there. I really want to hear like what you're saying and continue the conversation. I'm just going to update the note really quick. That way, when we come back to it later, we're all on the same page. And that lets them know, like I'm listening to you. Let me just get caught up real quick. And that's been a phrase I've really incorporated. That's been helpful. And then at the end or after every couple of patients, if you hit a break, you can really quickly go in and fill in the rest of that and close the chart. I never try to get more than th leave more than three charts open before I go on, if that makes sense, if possible. And that's helped me be much more caught up, even if it puts me five or like 10 minutes late for the next appointment, which I know is not great. Like 
that keeps things from being like so spilled over at the end. And usually it's only like five minutes, you know, like I can get all of that done within five minutes. And if you're kind of at the beginning of each appointment, really setting the time frame of the visit so the visits are more on time and then you're getting the charting done, it keeps you more on track weirdly um, than not. So those are the biggest things that I've really learned this year or been dealing with right now. So sorry if this was a bummer. I, again, I've, I've been so like, I don't know if I should even put this out there because it's not helpful. Um, so I tried to sprinkle in a little bit of helpful. If you guys are feeling that too, like, please, you don't have to, but if you want to share, I think it, I, one of the great things about this community is like everyone learns so much in the comments. I'm still getting comments from videos that are so old of people just being like, like, thank you so much for talking about this, like to each other, not in anything that I've done, but like there's conversations going on in the comments from other people going and seeing like, oh, this, this isn't just me. Cause I think, um, like I had said that the, this isn't just me feeling is the one that I just, that's why I'm trying to, that's why I make videos. So that you can realize like, oh, it's not just me. Like this is this other people feel like this. I'm not alone. Um, so if you feel comfortable sharing, that would be great. And other people can realize that they're not alone too. We, a lot of people have imposter syndrome. We just don't talk about it a lot. Um, if you have solutions <laughs> by all means, I I'll try whatever at this point. Um, and if you are waiting through the middle of it, I really do think it'll get better for us eventually. We just kind of got to like keep trudging through. Um, if you're a new NP, there is hope. You won't be so scared all the time. And yeah, um, hopefully some of those tips were helpful and this made you feel a little bit less alone. You're doing a great job wherever you are in your journey of whatever job you're doing. I hope you have a delightful rest of your week. You're doing a great job. Keep going. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.